Welcome to episode 62 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my guest this week is Barry Falk, the podcast enthusiast, IT professional, all kinds of other stuff. Welcome to the show, Barry. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, absolutely. It's been quite a while since you've been on my show last and yeah, well. uh, on, uh, and the show last. And uh, we're so, I'm so thrilled you're here. And I think it was uh, quite fitting as uh, Apple kind of did something strange. Yet. Oh, yeah. They had yeah. WWDC. I yeah, say, that, are we going to be able to talk about anything today? I don't know. I mean, oh, my God. I, I, I don't know. if I mean, I, we want to keep that show to an hour. So <laughs> I don't, <laughs> don't want to. Pull some pull some folks. I mean, we well we'll we'll, we'll see how it goes here. But uh, there's going to be so much to talk about. iOS has a new update. Mac OS. Uh, not, we're not talking about Mac OS. What is this? iOS here. iOS had an update. There's a new iPad OS. Hmm. Wa- watch OS. TV OS. Uh, to name a few and some other interesting announcements that occurred um, during the event. So instead of uh, my, our normal format of having some news stories, I think this is all news. So we'll just. Yes. I think we're just going to just dig right in and. Start talking about uh, everything that had, uh, that was uh, that was uh, announced. Not everything, but we'll, we'll we're going to really highlight some of our opinions and, and some of uh, our uh, thoughts of what was originally announced. So um, let's let's start off what our show is all about: iOS, and let's start right to iOS 13. Um, so uh, uh, Tim Cook came up on stage. He started mm-hmm. talking about all these different op- operating system updates, and uh, I. I I think iOS 13 had some good, exciting things. I'm hearing a lot of people excited about dark mode. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I use dark mode on Mojave and the Mac, uh, and I've been pleased with it. I actually use the Twitter app. I use the dark mode in the Twitter app in iOS 12. So um, what did you think of dark mode? I'm just, you're already running the bait, of course, because yeah, well. you love living on the, on, the, on the edge of technology. Yeah. So I can't The I ragged can't edge of it. disaster, maybe. But, uh, I mean, we, we were having some trouble already getting on to the show. Before, because yeah. you're running already running Catalina on your uh, Mac, so, uh, but yeah, what did you think of dark mode? No, it's really nice, and and just like anything, you know, it's one thing when developers come out with dark mode, and I think that's great, and it really gives us a taste of what's yeah. uh, out there. But really, Apple will then take it to that next level, and they'll just say, okay, great, we can make everything dark mode. But what does that mean in terms of contrast? What does it mean for yeah. accessibility? And there's just thoughtful touches throughout. So. And, and sure, there's a couple spots that they haven't tweaked quite yet, but it looks right. really good. And yeah. you know, and, and like you, Dave, I, you know, I've got the uh, OLED screens on my iPhone, and that's where mm-hmm. really just the, the oh, true blacks. Um, you know, it's a beta one, so we're not going to see some of the battery advantages quite yet. Yeah. But I think once it's all polished up by this fall, oh, I mean, yeah. it's going to be a rock solid choice, and that's and that's what I like. It's a choice. You're asked right as you do the install. Do you want to just do kind of the normal light mode, or do you want to try dark mode? And it's also easy enough to switch, and that's what's yeah. what's nice because there are times when you're in bright sunlight, you're going to want the light mode to help the the viewability. Right. But uh, boy, at night if you're reading. Uh, oh yeah, that's a huge thing. Of course, because uh, you know us crazy people who have our fo- <laughs> our phones on bedside, and I turn it on, it's like. Oh my blind! Oh yeah, it really uh, can be bright. This and is this is gonna this is gonna be huge. Um, I can't wait to, to see it. Um, definitely gonna uh, look at uh, getting some sort of device to uh, uh, to install it on. Maybe I'm, I I might have an iPad. I might be able to borrow from somebody. Hmm. There you go. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, see how that looks. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that. I think that was just a great a great new feature with that in itself. Um, I guess the other thing too is they they uh, they did announce that the FaceTime or FaceTime uh, Face ID mm-hmm. is about thirty percent faster loading. Yeah, how, they really yeah, done you've got speaking. it. Have how, how have you how have you seen it so far? Yeah, I mean, really, with the newer devices, it almost seemed instantaneous anyway, and it's by far uh, the smoothest experience I've had. And even with a beta one, again, it's impressive that you know, expect some bugs, and there are definitely a few, but those key core services. Just yeah. like always, just swiping up from the bottom, it's it's smooth and it's really nice because it just it makes it frictionless and you're getting good security and you have know, all this uh, you know behind the scenes work that's being done. So it's it's really nice and I've, I've been very pleased. So mm-hmm. I, I think you're going to even notice it faster to the point of you know it's al- it's almost like it's not there. Yeah. Um, r- related to that, uh, at least on the iPads, is is the performance improvements they made with the Apple Pencil. And oh yeah, that, that's I was. From- uh, yeah, we, 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 yeah, that was uh, from twenty nanoseconds to nine nanoseconds in, in performance. I bet that's 
pretty awesome. But again, right. that's, that's just, iPad OS. We, now, I, I'm going to have to correct. divide things here on divide and conquer on this on this episode because there's just right. uh, so, so much. Let, let's hold that thought, and we'll definitely we're going to dig into sure. I, iPad OS here in just a minute. Um, but uh, the other thing too is, and I think well, actually, we talk we can talk about this in the, on the iPad part as well as is the Files app and the the, being, the ability of sharing folders. That was mm-hmm. so I was like sure wow that's awesome i'm so excited about that because now you can with your icloud drive you actually can access files uh, from uh from basically anywhere um you can you can plug sd cards and usb flash drives into the ipad and actually be able to copy files back and forth from it what a concept natively yep so again that uh, that again we'll hit that on the ipad here just a minute because that (laughs) it's gonna it's it's going to be on the iPhone as well, but I don't think anybody is going to be doing that as frequently as they will on the iPad. Cause, uh, well, uh, you know, it, it, to, to your point, David, and that's, I think it's going to be interesting because if, and it's the big, if this fall, they come out with an iPhone that's USB C. Yeah. It does make, I mean, even, oh, even if they have an adapter it, it, using the files. And, and again, it's, it's one of those crazy things. You and I, you know, we're, Long-time Mac, Apple, iPad users. Right. So I think you and I both prefer using the iPad for most of our things. But I look at younger generations, whether it's in the workforce or families, and man, they just use their phones. And so the, the to, you, to your point about using files, they'll yeah. probably just plug those things in to just upload movies, and you know it, it'll be pretty cool. And I'm, I'm glad they finally decided to say, hey, okay, we've we've gone far enough. We've done a good job with cloud services, but there are times you just want to plug in a thumb drive. Oh well, yeah, for sure. And I've done it many times and it's, it was just such a nuisance to being able to do it because <laughs> you, I mean, they had so many third party. I mean, I had, I mean, I bought all of them, you know, they, they had the, the SanDisk one, you plugged it in, but you had to use the SanDisk app to copy yep. them. It was just like a, it was like a big circle around to, to, to work on this stuff. So, um, but I, I would definitely say, uh, yeah, that was, it, it, it was great. So well, let's talk about a little bit a little further because it's going to be even more uh, of a, of an advantage on the iPad. Um, the, uh, the, also they talked about, uh, Siri, Siri's got the more natural mm-hmm. voice, which sounded really yep. great. Like, the Siri it shortcuts, really good. Yeah, it really did during, during, uh, during that, uh, Siri shortcuts now, uh, support suggested automations that provide mm-hmm. personalized routines uh, for things like heading to work or going to the gym. Uh, the other thing I was pretty excited about was the AirPods. Now you can, uh, Siri can read the incoming messages mm-hmm. as they, as they arrive, um, uh, from messages on any Siri kit enabled messaging app. And that's, that's other key. Cause you could, you'd be using WhatsApp or, or any other, app, uh, messaging type program. So, uh, uh, Apple's being very open with that too. Uh, I, what'd you think of that? I mean, I think AirPods, at least having that was just huge. Yeah. I mean, I'm mean, obviously a huge fan of AirPods like you are. Yeah. And, I use them all the time. I mean, and it's really not a joke that oh. <laughs> it pretty much I prop them in the first thing in my, in, in sure. when I get up by listening to podcasts and the ability to have that, especially in certain scenarios where you're walking around and your hands aren't available and you just need to do a quick reply like they showed in the demo. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a game changer, right? It's just, it again, makes that experience so easy that you don't have to worry. Oh, okay, I got to put this stuff down and yeah, it's sure. It's a first world problem, but Enabling that communication just makes it so much better for everybody. And I think, again, right. you look at the accessibility aspects of everything that Apple does, yeah. it really does open up uh, messaging to a larger audience as well. Oh, it really does. Um, so uh, that, that, that was a couple other things that kind of highlighted out to iOS 13. Um, they also did some, I, mean, we're not, I, I think I'm probably going to talk about this in future episodes because, like I said, there's just so much to talk mm-hmm. about today. I just want to just kind of mention a few things here. The Photos app was amazing. Um, the, yes. the, new, the new interface, the new editing tools, the revamp, and then the, they really, they made some huge strides with this. I, I was just, just really thrilled about and then being able to break things down by year, easily finding it instead of seeing that mass view of <laughs> years of, of photos. Um, that was great. Um, and then the videos, though, uh, 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 will play automatically upon your selection, um, you know, days and years feature. Uh, it just it just goes on and on. Um, the uh, the other thing that they uh, they added was enhanced uh, re- reminders app, which I was really excited about. I think mm-hmm. that was way overdue because uh, that one was just just kind of aged. Uh, but I that was definitely one of the oldest ones they hadn't updated. Yeah. And then in, and then they they did enhance a lot of the map, Apple Maps features, which they did demo during. Uh, during the keynote yesterday too, while I record this. Um, so yeah, I think I think a lot of that stuff in iOS 13 was really uh, was huge. Um, anything yeah. else stand out for you as far as that we didn't talk about? Um, I, I think the security aspect. You want to get oh, into yeah, that? Yeah, let's go. To, let's 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 dive into that. Um, yeah, they they did announce the. Uh, 
uh, sign in with Apple because I would never in a million years sign in with Facebook. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't. I mean, I probably would do Google more. I, I mean, mm-hmm. Facebook. I avoid like the play when it comes to that type of sign in because I don't want my face. I don't want Facebook to have every sign in I have. Sure. Um, so yeah, go ahead. And, uh, uh, I know you were pretty psyched about this as well as I was about uh, yeah. about the sign in with Apple. It, it was something I, I guess I wasn't expecting. Apple talks Neither. a good game about privacy. And I think that's important, but it's always a bolt-on into something. You know, security yeah. is baked into your browsing. You know, when you're using messages, it's encrypted. And that's great, and I think that's really important. But now this becomes its own, in a sense, its own tool. And you can embed it into apps or websites or whatever. And basically, you're logging in and you're signing in with Apple. So it's the same concept, but Apple's making a point that they are not getting your private information. They are certainly not sharing information out to these uh, uh, other apps or other websites yep. and, and that really is important um it I, really is. I think you know I, I, this is just my take and this is partially because we're both security professionals but also it's just i'm, I'm tired of all these breaches Me and too. email addresses getting out there phone numbers locations and something really needs to be done. I mean, I don't care about certain things. And, you know, you, you you joke with me. Hey, I see you're going to this location, whatever. I might post where I'm flying to on Facebook. But I'm willingly doing that. Yeah. I share that out there. And, and people, you know, certainly most of my friends and workmates know <laughs> that uh, I'm going I somewhere. Mean, we're friends. You know, I'm on your find, well, find my now. Find my right. friends. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, so I think this is this is really important. And it's a couple of things. Not only is it giving you a way of, of authenticating, which I think is great because if this Absolutely. is pervasive, it just makes it a lot easier. But it also has behind the scenes work where if you need to create an email address uh, or you want to use an email address, you can use your own. However, Apple will then f- effectively mask it with a unique yeah. uh, email address every single time. And when you think about all the sites that you you have to give your email address for just to sign up, right. and you're like, I don't know if this site is legit or I don't really want them to have it because who knows who they're going to sell it to and i'm sure it's in their end user license agreement and i do not read it as i should um no, and so no it's much easier <laughs> of course not and it's much easier than to just remove it down the road and in case that site does get hacked or breached um they're just going to have these ridiculously long string of emails that, mm-hmm. that mean nothing so right. i'm really liking that and i really think it just shows that apple is in a hundred percent here and i think you know there's you know, they make a lot of money on their hardware. They like make a lot of money on their services. This one doesn't directly make money. No. Nope. But boy, it gives me that feeling of like they're all in on this. And, and, and Tim Cook even said, right. we can make a lot of money selling information about our users, but that is not our business. And Oh, and it was stressed big time during the during the, the keynote. I mean, it was I, I was very pleased to see that. And it was it's always kind of chuckle out there because they were you know they were digging Google and Facebook oh, when yeah. they made their mention. So yeah, hey, and our information is secure. Um, yeah, and uh, and it's it, it is it's a it is a bit of a struggle. And I know that's where f- Google and Facebook are very good with the convenience because are you willing to trade some level of privacy and security for convenience? In some cases, I could be argued, sure, why not? But if you make this as effectively a standard out there and you have the option, yeah. sign with Google, Facebook, Apple. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And the one good thing with this sign-in with Apple, they're using a, uh, a random secure email address that mm-hmm. isn't right. an email address, really. Um, so they were showing that during the show, during the, the keynote, it was uh, random emails each time. And yep. no, no one would ever memorize or know those no. <laughs> in a million years. I mean, it's it was great how they how they really did a great job of uh, keeping things uh, secure, uh, uh, doing that stuff. So, um, and uh, other thing that I think that would stand out a little bit on iOS uh, 13 was uh, the fact that we just mentioned it. The Find My app is uh, yes. going to be available. So. Um, they, they did announce uh, not too too long ago with back to my Mac, which is being shut down on the Mac side of things for sharing, right. um, and then the fi- uh, the Find My app. So the, you know, I, when I first heard that, was Find My, Find My, <laughs> Oh My. Right. Uh, no, it's a Find My that's merging the Find My Friends and Find My iPhone iPad device, which makes sense yeah. because every time someone would ask me, so oh, did you did you. But turn your I find my iPhone on. Well, I know it's my iPad, uh, or, right. or vice versa. So, uh, so really, really made some improvements with that, which is which is really awesome. Yeah. Um, and uh, 
Oh, of course, uh, we also have to talk about in iOS 13. Uh, you've already done it. These, the Memojis uh, now mm-hmm. have, have, <laughs> have makeup. So you can, and the one yeah. you've sent me already has, you've really have, uh, made yourself look real pretty there, Barry. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, yeah, they've uh, got the piercings. they got the oh lipstick. Oh, my God. It was frightening, yeah. some of the piercings they had. And, um, so, Which, and you know, this is going to, I guess, where your audience, well, you know, what they want. And, and yeah. younger really want this stuff and that's fine because i know a lot of old curmudgeons were, were talking about it I, I, I won't mention any names but listen to a few on not i don't understand this all oh, this but, but it, it, that, that's what it is that's what the kids love this the, love doing and and, and even well, young it, adults too yeah, no and i and, and it's it's fun to customize and you can see it in a lot of other apps especially like the chat app so i think it was smart for them to do it i i i Definitely felt that they crossed the line that I I don't cross myself when they had the two. Right. Uh, I think it was the Instagram uh, influencers or the Facebook influ- uh Sorry, yeah. YouTube. And and but that's that's great. I mean, again, uh, in talking to people who are a generation or two younger than me, you know, that's just normal for them. And I'm like, great. So it was. They thought it was really cool, and I'm like, okay. So I, you know, we got some cool stuff for us old fogies, <laughs> yeah. like the MLB app on the watch. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, oh my God, that thing is awesome. Yeah. But uh, awesome. yeah, I, I just think it's it's smart, and I think and this goes back to things you and I have talked about for years about Apple, where they're really increasing the diversity. Right. Um, they're getting an influx. I mean, nothing against Phil Schiller or um, Craig Federici; those guys are great. Yeah. But you want to bring in an influx because that's going to keep Apple uh, viable. Uh, and fresh and uh and i love to see it and you know yeah. no not not everybody's gonna be happy and you can't no. you can't play that game Imp- impossible i mean exactly. and the, that's what was great about the keynote they brought up lots of different people up on stage yeah. to from the different departments to talk about all this stuff so um the uh uh the other thing too is uh they did add now you can do- you can now download larger apps over cellular mm-hmm. i think the limit was 150 yeah. now it's going to be 200 megabytes which is great because right. i don't mind doing that because i have an unlimited plan so but, <laughs> but for, of course of those of you who have uh, are, are data challenged you know you can always turn that off like you normally do um right they did and the change- apps themselves will be smaller and we'll yeah and, and they're reducing size so that's probably another reason um, they did change uh, the volume indicator. Have you tried that with the volume indicator? Oh, yeah. And that's, you know, again, it's these little touches because, you know, there are things like my podcast that I, I start yeah. playing and just out of habit, I, I lower or raise the volume and the indicator's right by the volume switches. I'm yeah. like, okay, totally makes sense, right? It's yeah. right there. It's out of the way. Same thing with the iPad. When you do it, it's up on the top. And at first, it's a wider uh, volume indicator, but as soon as you start to change it, it shrinks. So it immediately gets out of the way. It makes it noticeable and then yeah. drops into the background. So some very nice t- thought touches there because what oh, was it? Sure. Just a big old uh, display in the middle for the long. Oh, yeah. Well, it was always that icon. Then. They had that icon yeah. for forever. Every time you climb up, there there goes the bar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, so, uh, and um, what else did they have? Uh, well, let's let's actually mention compatibility. Now, this is yeah. uh, this was interesting. Um Definitely course all the new models starting from the x to 10s all the way down uh every phone's going to get supported the the cutoff is i believe the iphone se and then right. you also have the 6s and 6s plus is also is also covered but anything below that you're out of luck yeah, folks. I mean, that's that's pretty good i and think again, that's fair that is very fair. how much you pack in i mean it, that's years and years worth of devices and you're yeah. you're seeing on average between the Googles and the Samsungs and everything, you're going to get two years. That's yeah. it, at least in terms of support. Now they may run, but yeah. but you know, where still. Apple is saying we're st- we're still all in. Um, last well, year was the big enhancement in terms of making these devices run. I'm sure, they got in some right. with the some, some hot water stuff, with the batteries, with the batteries but yeah. they seem to be continuing down that path. They didn't say, "Okay, we did that last year, so we can just cram stuff in." No, they they continue to refine that, and yeah. I think that's smart. No, it it really does create a tight operating system, and again, you get a yeah. good user experience. And of course, the uh, the the wonderful brand new iPad Pod Touch seventh generation. Mm-hmm. That's important, but hey, it's supported. But yeah. you got to buy a brand new one in order to get it because if you have a six gen, you're out of luck. Yeah, it won't run on the uh, the Air platform as well. Um. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's good, and we'll we'll come back to. Uh, I'll come to the iPad and give you that compatibility here in just a minute. But yep. let's look. We'll kind of mix it up a little. Let's let, let's go to the Apple Watch. Um, yeah, I think the most exciting thing to me was the new. Uh, well, of course, the new watch faces and and the calculator app. 
Now, Ooh, all of hey. us who had those Casio calculator watches when That's we right. were younger, we right? Little... Now we have it on our, iP- our, our Apple Watch. It's too exciting. There you go. Uh, and I, I think it was clever the way they did. They did make it some cute things where, yeah. you know, if you're doing the tips, you can divide by the number of people, and it'll show exactly how much each person knows. And and I, and I think that those are probably common use cases that people will use it for, right? And, you know, to that to your point, Dave, it's like, you know, they did some neat things like the calculator, but... I think they're playing, well, we know Apple's playing the long game. That is their strategy. But one of the things they said was that now you have an app store on the watch. And I'm like, that's a small screen. I have to deal with that. But where are they going to go with this? Well, at some point, you can theoretically decouple that watch from every other device. And you can go about your day, have the watch, and I guess AirPods, right? You could do all the streaming. There's a streaming API that's uh, included with the watch. And it could really make uh, for just a great day where you just want to go, hey, I don't want to carry a wallet. I don't want to have anything on me. It's going to run up and down the beach, go swimming, whatever. You have devices that are effectively waterproof or at least water resistant. (laughs) Yeah. And, I, I'm still funny. nervous to I'm still nervous to swim with it. I, I just <laughs> I, I I can't. Yeah, with, uh, with the watch. With the, with the Apple Watch, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the other thing too is like you mentioned earlier with all the apps. Now the App Store is an actual App Store for Apple Watch. So you'll yeah. be able to install your apps without the need of your iPhone anymore. You double tap the bottom button on on the uh, the watch, and uh, it will install them just like you do any other app on your iPhone or your iPad. Yeah. Um, so which is pretty slick. Now, MLB was one of the first to, to, to design a new, brand new app for uh, uh, an, uh, a new revised app for the Apple right. Watch. You want to you want to tell the listeners so uh, because we're both passionate baseball fans, but I know you're yeah. really more excited I'm, about it. Yeah, I just I just love the fact that and MLB kudos to them they they're always on the leading edge of tech whether it's you know using Statcast for the the players in the parks or their right. apps for all the devices. Um, now it's, it's really, you have, you know, live updates on your watch. You can get scores, you can hear the highlights. I mean, literally they were playing the audio from the game. And I just think that's great because again, they're trying to provide experience for people like, oh, you know what, maybe I can get a watch for my kid and he or she is 10, 11 or 12. You don't want them to have a phone yet. Yeah. But you want to have something where you can communicate them. You give them a walkie-talkie feature. Oh, yeah. You give them something. Some, you know, baseball is pretty innocuous. You know, let them have a few apps. Why not? I think I think yeah. you're going to tap into another market here. Yeah, I mean, sure, right. for us, you know, we're, we're going to have all of them, of course. But yeah. we we are just one segment. Then Apple's looking, I'm sure, at all mechanisms of the of the marketplace and going, hmm, there is a market out there that just wants a watch. They don't, yeah. you know, and and hey, kudos to them. Because, oh, hundred percent. Uh, so then yeah. the the uh, other standard apps are going to come with it now. You'll be able to listen to audiobooks, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to listen to this on your watch. You don't have to bring your iPhone with you if you don't want to, yeah. and be able to listen to it. Um, voice memos, finally. I mean, they have third party apps that uh, just right. just press record was one app I always was really pushing. That's kind of going to put them out of bit. And I don't know if it put them out of business, but it's because uh, it, the voice memos app is okay. Uh, but sure. It, but but at least now Apple is putting in as a standard uh, app that's going to be uh, in the app store and right. by, being able to bypass your iPhone completely. Um, and uh, being able to do uh, searching with Siri is going to, Siri is going to be improved. Uh, app uh, products pages designed for the watch screen will be right for the wrists. And then developers will now be able to build app, I, Apple watch only apps, which is independent from uh, iOS, which is going to yeah. be great. Yeah, I think you're yeah. going to see a continued quality improvement on these apps. And, you know, the watch isn't for everything, certainly. No. But I, I've found that there are certain aspects of the watch that become such a handy companion. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the podcast enthusiast at the beginning. Right. My preferred ones is Overcast. Yep. Uh, Marco Arma certainly spent a lot of time with his watch. And I know he's frustrated that some of these streaming APIs weren't available until now. Yeah. But literally, the ability to look at my watch and just skip forward or back, uh, pause it, is mm-hmm. so handy. And it's like, oh, well, just pull your phone out. Well, my phone might be in my pocket or my phone yeah. might be uh, somewhere else. And now the watch allows me to do that. Now, if you could really decouple the phone and just mm-hmm. have everything stored locally, I do think that's that's amazing. Dave, I did want to share one story, if, if you don't yeah. mind. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, you know, I was in uh, Nashville. I had the fortune of... Uh, a conference and uh, spending yeah. one vacation day at the water park there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did just just as, as a testament to the watch and swimming. I was in the water 
okay. a good chunk of the day. My wife was in, and I'm not exaggerating, she was in for eight hours. And she's in the wave pool. So this thing is splashing around and just going yep. crazy. And it totally took it. I mean, she didn't go deep into the water, which I'm sure is part well, of it. I think nine meters is what it's rated to. Yeah. And But I, you know what I thought was neat was that it would, you know how when you do a, like an outdoor walk and you and I are at the ballpark and we're like trying to right. chase a fall ball and you're like, hey, are you doing outdoor activity? It does the same thing yeah. with swimming. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's cool. It's asking if I want to do a swim workout. And I would do that. And what it forces you to do it is it actually you expel the water um, from the yep. thing. So you're doing yep. that, which mm -hmm. is part of it. And, uh, and it locks the screen so the water itself can't accidentally cause input. And it, it, I was just impressed because I had never even tried that before. And I'm like, it's all there. It just works. Yeah, absolutely. A good good segue into the health features that they just added to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a noise app. They demonstrated it on stage, and that's pretty incredible, I must say. Yeah, so I like that. It was a live demo, too. A live demo where they had people cheering really loud, and it says, oh, your watch is going to tell you, you know, it's really loud in here right now. You probably yeah. should be protecting your ears. So yeah. another piece another piece of, of, of a health puzzle that uh, apple has really jumped on with that and it's it's also i was impressed to see that that this they also have a cycle tracking app for 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 women with menstrual cycles that yep. that, was, that was pretty awesome and then they have a trends tab for the activity tracking app so um, health is huge 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 for for the apple watch and this and and this just really emphasized it more don't you think yeah absolutely i mean i think they've done a good job and they've seen where again the trend of the watches that you know people are using it tremendously for health i don't I, i'm not a big fan of working out but i don't i mean i like to walk walking um exactly and you know and it, i do like to see where i'm at at the end of the day whether it's you know you walk this many steps or climb these many stairs and when you can glance at the watch or it reminds you hey barry you know what get off your button <laughs> you know, do it, if you do a brisk i see your steps workout, you're, we're competing yeah. against each other yeah exactly <laughs> And, and, you know, it, it just, it's just a subtle, subtle reminder. There are times I'm like, you know what? You're right. I've been too sedentary today. You know, we both work yeah. in offices. Um, yeah. It wouldn't hurt for us, especially now it's gorgeous outside that we can just go outside, walk around the building. Heck, we can yeah. do a conference call together yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, do that. Yeah. So, uh, I, no, Apple, Apple continues to push it. And with this trending analysis, uh, yeah. and, 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 and encourages you, uh, I thought, uh, they, they really seem to get that. And I know. Uh, it'll just continue. But to your your point back, uh, things that Apple surprises us with, you know, you could mm -hmm. argue that dark mode, I'm oh, sure it's been around for a while. Yeah, that's true, right? And there's some other features. But like the hearing stuff, I've never heard that before. No. As, as an, as an uh, um, accessibility and And, and to be able feature. to just pick it up like that on your watch with no hardware adjustments at all. It was there. Right. We didn't even know it. Yeah. So, so kudos to them because I could definitely see that. I mean, you know, we're we're both within relative proximity of O'Hare. It'll be really interesting yeah. for outside in a barbecue, and all of a sudden you're watching like, hey, you know, you got a plane. Yeah, I want to go inside this today, but um, you know, we're at the ballpark. I don't know yeah, what's the, considered loud, right? I mean, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I do know people that through exposure have gotten uh, as, as tinnitus, right? The hear, ringing in your ear. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. So hey, yeah. this is one more tool. Thank no, you for that. Yeah, keep keep going on with this Apple. It's it's just great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so and then the um, the only other thing with the, with with the watch is, is compatibility. When when is this? What Apple Watch models is going to be compatible with? And I'm pretty impressed. Apple's done this. Series right. one, series two, series three, and series four all covered. Yeah. So unless you bought the very first or Apple series watch, zero, <laughs> so they go, are, are also known as series zero. Right. I did. I've owned every. I think I've owned every single model. I don't know. I didn't own the series one. I went from zero to two, and then okay. I had three, and then I had four. I think I skipped one. Um, yeah. So, but all those, you know, most of those models are available even in the third party third party market. If you wanted to buy a lower end watch, now you're going to be able to take advantage of some of this stuff. Um, I think some of the older watches don't like the walkie talkie feature. I only think only works. I think series four. Right. Um, and things like that. So you're going to be limited. Obviously, they've limited some of the apps uh, to, to, to certain models. Series 4 is a great. We both have the Series 4. Absolutely yeah, I, awesome. I, 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 it, I'm so happy. My, my wife is, I, I, I talked to her into buying the watch, and she absolutely <laughs> loves it now. She's working out every day and just uses it. And sure. It's just, it, it, it's a great device. Everybody loves it. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, and I don't know enough about the underlying technology, but right. I'm, ex I'm curious about your experience, Dave. When I, I found my, one of my favorite use cases for the watch is that quick reminder. Literally, 
you know, raising my wrist and saying the the, the keyword right. and say, <laughs> right, remind me in X time or when I get home. And it is always accurate. I mean, seriously. I don't even get yeah, it. Seriously, it is. Siri is I don't, ab- absolutely. I think it's more accurate on the watch than it is on that, any exactly. other devices. I don't see the same accuracy on the iPhone and the iPad, which oh. and there's arguments that while well, you're putting the yeah. speaker and the, I'm sorry, the microphone up to your mouth, maybe. Yeah. Um, but. It. I am so impressed with that. And that's because it's so rock solid. I will literally do the command and just put my arm down. I don't wait for it to say it because it's hundred yeah. percent and it's, it's silly little things, right? Remind me when I get home to do well, this. Of course. Yeah, get this that's store. What it's, what it's there for. But, no. And that's exactly it. It's providing that convenience that I need. So I don't have to stop type in a reminder and all that. Now you mentioned the reminders app. Now I'm yeah. curious when these things start to all, you know, everybody start to, to be on the new versions, right. how well we can coordinate those things. So I can say, remind me at this to call Dave or whatever. And I think right, it, right, there right. are ways to tag you so that you would also see the notification in some, in some I fashion. I bet you they'll, they'll do that, especially for participating in the Find My app of finding our friends. Right. So uh, I bet you they will. Um, so yeah, that's the watch. Uh, let's uh, let's tap briefly into TV OS uh, with sure. the, uh, Apple TV. So we of course talk about that that great device as well. Uh, one of the biggest things I think they added in the Apple TV TV OS 13 was uh, the the new home screen and support for multiple user profiles. That is awesome. That's that's now, really nice. And that was obvious be- why they did it because they're preparing for the m- movies and and all the new shows are coming out and. Uh, you know, of course, they're they're going to be pushing that as part of their services. So sure, why not have just like just like Netflix does and others uh, that have have separate separate profiles for each person. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, and just with family sharing and all that, you know, yeah. it's the way we're doing. It, we're still old school, right? Where right. my family uses the same ID, and so sure, if someone's watching, you know, this type of genre, whatever, and it influences what you end up getting in terms of recommendations. Now. Right. Everybody's a separate, which is great. I really like that. And I think that was a smart move. And just too. it's it's a good redesign. And they're obviously taking it seriously. Yep. You know, there's arguments could be made that it's you know, it is an expensive device, but it works really well. It does. It's rock solid. It is. Um it's by far my my device of choice to the point where I actually do travel with it because you can oh. usually plug it into an HDMI port Why not? at a hotel. And then I have access to all, all these you know movies and other things I want to do or some of the games I play. And we're hoping more and more hotels switch to them because yeah. I've talked about in previous episodes uh, about when uh, Jamf uh, actually has uh, support for it, Apple TVs and they yep. uh, they they did a case study showing that uh, that a hotel decided to, to to take them on and use their use their product and the, they have Apple TVs in every hotel room, which is nice. pretty sweet. So I think uh, that you're going to start seeing that more and more. So um, and the other thing was interesting. Um, and again, I'm not much of a gamer. I think you, you're more than me, probably. Is the, the the availability of using your Xbox One and PlayStation Four controller support? Uh, that was it. I was surprised but pleased. And they're good controllers. Right? Yeah, they're, they're similar good. in mm-hmm. style. And I think that's great because again, you're opening up uh, gaming. You know, people know that that is something that people will do. And to take a familiar controller. I mean, I know they showed a couple games at the keynotes, but. Yeah. Uh, you could really start. It'd be a lot easier for them to port over games, and I don't, you know, with with uh, the use of you know these these apps allow you to port from one platform to the other. Right. You know, could you do like the games that I play on the Xbox are all those Lego games, right? And <laughs> yeah. it doesn't require a ton of power. Yeah. And and certainly the Xbox is a powerful device, so I would love to see that because I would rather play on the Apple TV. Then to fire up the Xbox and go through all their stuff, and it wants to take over my living room, and I'm like, you know what? I just want to play a game. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. not much else to say, really. They 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 actually opened it up, opened the keynote up with TVOS, which was smart mm-hmm. because it's the shortest of it all. But we, right. we, we we kind of did it in reverse order here because, uh, yeah. and again, I'm not we're we're not here just to just do a flat out review of, of everything that happened at, during the event. We're here more so we want to give you our our insights on, sure. on what uh, what uh, what's happening here and so far uh, what we're doing here. So. Um, the, uh, the other the one that was the, was a big announcement that I was completely surprised about were you is I, as app iPad OS. Yeah. I, I, I did not expect Apple thought to they do would that. Split. Not, and, and, and I see why, um, yep. this is really t- telling you that Apple is serious to make this device, a, your, you know, your, your computer. Um, I did a presentation at Mac stock a number of years ago. Could, could, could the iPad be your full-time computer? Right. And it was it was probably when I think about it when I did it through I think it was three or four years ago when I did that, yeah. um, it was it was doable but um, 
maybe not. Um, but I think with a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about here, it really has uh, made a, uh, a big difference uh, to what, uh, what it can be. Now, really, the first thing, and again, you've installed it on your iPad, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> maybe. Uh, and, and, it's, uh, and, it's, and, and I have had heard some people saying it's a bit buggy right now. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the home screen has been redesigned, and some people are liking it. Some people are not. Uh, and well, uh, like we, like you said, you're not going to please everybody all the time. You can't please you can't please everybody. Uh, the widget base today view is, is added uh, to the home screen, so you can uh, provide quicker access to news headlines, the weather, and all that. It looks cool. I've seen that picture. Um, to enhance the uh, iPad OS even more, they've updated split view because I always had a tough time getting split view. But they sh- when they demonstrated it, it was a it was a lot lot quicker, easy way to get around, wasn't it? Oh, ab- absolutely. And I and I I use it a lot. Um, and they showed various aspects of it that are new, but one of the things that I really liked about it is that it's just, it's easy that you can pair up multiple windows and tabs yeah. within the same app and you could have two notes pages, for example, or two yeah. Microsoft word. And that is important because I do a lot of that where you have to do comparisons between documents, uh, version and controls and so forth. That makes this a lot easier. So yeah. you're really pushing more business use cases out there, but you know, you talk about the home screen, Dave, and yeah. it's. You know the widget screen is is good, mm-hmm. but then you had to make the point of sliding over to it. Now it sits on the left third of the screen, and I was I've already gone and, and customized about five widgets that are handy. You know we both work in multiple time zones, yep. so I've got my my time zone clock on there with Cal zones. I've got uh, my battery indicator because I'm always nosy about that. <laughs> but the simplest thing is like the up next, right? The you know hey. Mm-hmm. This is, uh, Time for us to record our podcast, or you know, I've got a meeting tomorrow at uh, eight AM. Whatever it is, it's just a nice, quick view. And I know that there are people that say, "Well, they should have done more." Yeah, I, I guess, but it's, it's a nice start. You can also put more onto that screen. Uh, they've tightened up that grid, so yeah. definitely it is a change from the old standard iOS screen. So I, I think it's a good, it's a good big step. I'd like to see them do more, sure, yeah. but I'm not upset. I think this is no, this no. is a nice change. Um, so. Uh, we talked about the Apple Pencil earlier. Let's let's dig into that a little bit further. Uh, right. the, the 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 lag time was twenty nanoseconds, which think about it really isn't much. And then actually, if you think about it, that was pretty impressive that Apple was able to get it down that that to, to, to that uh, speed, uh, right. considering the, what the device is. But now they got it down to nine nanoseconds. And yeah, do I mean, you, it, I, it, how do you notice it? I was I was surprised that they could actually. Change it because I thought that would all be hardware based. But again, obviously milliseconds. That, I'm sorry, I'm saying nanosecond, millisecond. <laughs> no problem. Um, that they were able to really, you know, through software control and, and yeah. adjusting the hardware, you can just reduce that. I mean, that's incredible. I mean, it really, it almost felt like you were drawing li- at the same time. I mean, the, the delay was by far the best mm-hmm. for a device. Um, what little I've tested so far, it does seem f- more fluid, is the way I would describe it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't do a whole lot. I mean, I did some annotations. I did some signatures. And it's just, it's so easy. Mm-hmm. And it's that, to me, has always been the benefit of the pencil for me because I have to sign a lot of documents electronically. Yep. And it's so easy with the iPad, just, and especially with the iPad Pro where the pencil sits on the top. Yeah. You know, just grab it. It's already charged up. It's already connected. Sign, boom, send, done. It, it's just a productivity enhancement tool that's it's amazing. And now it's just, again, it's, it's better. I, I would be curious for the mm. creative types, you know, those that are artists. Um, and I and I did listen to one podcast, the two gentlemen that do a lot of comics and things, mm-hmm. and they were like just thrilled because they already love the iPad. They yeah. were like, "This is a great device. It's the best drawing tool they've ever had." Yep. But then now they're like, "Oh, wait a second. This is going to be like almost quite literally pencil and paper where there's no lag." Mm-hmm. And they they were excited to try it out, and they hadn't uh, they hadn't done that yet. So I think we're going to hear more there. But, uh, you know, okay. again, they could have left it and no one would have said anything. But again, they showed that they're pushing the boundaries in all angles. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what I was kind of excited about. I, I bet you are is mouse support and keyboard support. Yeah. And an accessibility option. This is an accessibility option. So really, it wasn't necessarily highlighted as a quote unquote option. But right. It, but you can go into accessibility and actually... Uh, but it's available in the assistive touch option within accessibility uh, right. to, to use your mouse. Um, have you tried this yet? No, that one I haven't tried it. I'm a little yeah. bit torn, <laughs> yeah. um, probably because I'm a fan of the touch interface. And yeah. I mean, mouse is fine. 
Um, so I'm kind of curious to see how the interplay would be between the two because I keep my hands on the screen and or the keyboard. Yeah. Um, but there are probably good, you know, good uses here. And I think this is probably the one area that if it's done right, will take them again over one of the hurdle last remaining hurdles. And, and the people that I work with, mm-hmm. when they're doing spreadsheets and they're doing fine type of document management like that, they really like the pinpoint control that a, a, a mouse gives you. Now, my mm-hmm. argument is always, well, if you program for touch, there are ways of doing it that's just as good. But mm-hmm. it is hard to change, you know, some of the culture on that. Um, and, I'm, and I'm really curious to see how that works. I've, I've, I don't know if you've used uh, Citrix actually came out with a mouse for the mm-hmm. iPad. Oh, okay. Um, so you could use the mouse within the app only. So you could get your virtual desktop. You could use a full-blown version of Microsoft Word, essentially running in Windows. And you had a mouse that worked within it. And I'm like, yeah. And, and again, you, you experience things like latency. Um, oh, yeah. So now you put it in the accessibilities. It's baked into the operating system. I think this could be really cool in certain cases. I don't. Uh, I'm curious to see if there'll be widespread adoption because one of the nice things about the iPad is you don't really have, you really don't have to bring anything when you travel yeah. or just out and about. So, <laughs> but yeah. that again, you're getting, this goes back to the dark and light mode. Give people those options. Let them use the device how they want to use it. Right. And then the other thing I mentioned was a, uh, it also is, is designed now to take advantage of the larger screens. So you have, the, of course, the, the 12.9 inch screen. I have the 11 inch screen, but mm-hmm. I can't see much difference. So that's going to, this is going to affect it. But they did incorporate a lot of features that uh, function as a, com- a computer placement, which is uh, uh, the um, additional keyboard shortcuts for right. sw- with physical keyboards. Um, yeah. So so you could uh, think, let's say, a magic keyboard if you want to. Um, and uh, you could uh, use that instead of the the, the case keyboard because some people don't really don't like that keyboard so as much. They don't like the way sure. it feels, but they do like the uh, the keyboard the 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 the, 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 the magic keyboard, right? Um, yeah. And uh, you can link that too. And and uh, we'll we'll put a link in the show notes with this. Is uh is it shows a a huge list of different uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can use, um, including uh, things like using a default font size. Uh, you can zoom back and forth. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, save a web page. There's just all kinds of other uh, all kinds of other things you can do. And um, the shortcuts do work with the Apple's uh, uh, sh- smart keyboard, so that uh, that right. gives you that gives you a uh, uh, gives you the option as well. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 link to show notes. I don't need to go deep down deep with this, but have you used a lot of this stuff? So it's, you know, um, you've only had it for a day, so I yeah. still can't see much uh, about what you've experienced so far. Yeah, no, there there are some definitely some Safari commands that I was looking at the list. And I'm like, that would be handy for you know moving around the different tabs or closing on other tabs that are similar or the same as on the Mac or even other operating systems. And I think that's great because I've gotten used to using the the common ones to copy. And paste and so forth yeah. um, to be able to control the browser windows I think that would be great again it just makes it uh, a more productive experience yeah. now one of the things it, I'm going to veer off for a sec since we're no, talking I'm, about I'm uh, things like that they also added some more gesture based controls yeah and yeah this, the gestures I was going to talk about that yeah oh, yes. okay yeah so th- this is interesting because again this is training our our minds to how, how it works and you know, for a while there, they had ways that, well, they didn't even have cut, copy, and paste in the original iOS. But once they got it, it was good, and certainly for a touch device, but it wasn't quite as fluid. Now they've, they they added the keyboard, you had the, the Command C and, and Command V, and that was great. But now you can do these three finger commands where you can right. basically pinch like you're grabbing it to copy it. Then you expand your three fingers to paste it down there. And then you can do a three finger swipe to undo. It, it worked really well. I was awesome. I was surprised because uh, even on the demo on the on the screen it was a little janky, um, but I'm sure the guy was nervous in front of everybody. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I would some of our notes for this podcast. I was just playing around with it and you know copied something, then paste, 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 and I'm like, that's easy. It worked really well. I just need to train my mind to do that, especially if I'm doing a lot of stuff on the screen. So some kind of neat stuff that they did there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, and yeah, I'll. I'll We'll put a link to show notes as far as the uh, the new shortcuts uh, that you can use with the the, the different finger swipes. Um, right. So that that'll, that'll make it definitely a big difference. Um, so let's uh, let's uh, that's iPad and it's yeah. um, and it's iPad uh, the iPad Pro. Um, I, I guess I have to come back and find out uh, what uh, the compatibility is. So really, 
all the iPads that will be supported by iOS 13 is all the pros, of course. Um, you have the sixth generation iPad. You'll have the fifth generation iPad, which was the, uh, the, the, the lower end price iPads that are still on the market. Of course, you have the Air 2. You have the Mini 4. And I believe they're doing, still doing the Mini 3. Um, but, uh, and the Air 2, which is the older. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's, that one's available. But beyond that, you're at the <laughs> end of the road. Yeah, and that's the same thing. I mean, and I, but they have been a little more aggressive with iPads than they have with iPhones. Uh, understandably so, because I think more people have iPhone iPhones, of course, than they do iPads. Um, so um, that's uh, that's definitely something that uh, that you have to look at, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I and I, again, I think it's great that they're trying to keep everybody up to date uh, with their current hardware. Um, you know, and, and I know part of that's marketing because they've gotten a lot yeah. of grief about yeah. uh, planned obsolescence, but you know, you want to keep that base out there and have, you know, X billion <laughs> devices uh, yeah. in use because, you know, uh, we're fortunate that we're both in the industry and, and doing these things that we we can get these on a fairly regular basis. Um, but the reality is most people won't and, and they don't need to. And so you can buy a device every four, five years. Um, you know, that that's smart on the pocketbook and it's uh, it's great for the environment. So good for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so briefly, we talk about some of the other items that were talked about. The HomePod um, gained handoff support, yay! Yep. finally. <laughs> um, and then the AirPods getting the audio sharing feature we talked about. Um, but the the HomePod was interesting because that's they're getting handoff support as well as you'll be able to have multiple profiles. Um, yeah. Because now you because that was such a that was kind of a nuisance because you know you sync your 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 home pod to your phone and then then your wife could say hey play me his messages and then unless <laughs> you had that turned on you'd be able to hear him not that you have anything to hide but right um, but but that was kind of dumb why, why would you want to do that and when when anybody could walk in the room and and if you had it turned on and use that so now they've uh, with iOS 13 they're now going to provide the profiles yeah for, and, for I, and I, I'm, I'm you know the the home pod is a great device it is. um it is it is somewhat niche still and i guess you could say that the apple tv was like that for a while yeah. you know it they're not playing the you know flood the market right and they they and frankly they did a lot of that with the ipod right but here they're just saying well we have the basically the one the one unit it's um uh, was it 329 i think for well, you can get it for a lot less now they they've been putting it on sale some places 267 288 right yeah, so I when I bought mine, I've talked about that previously. Is uh, I think I got as low as two forty nine. So yeah, uh, so I mean, but it's it's that's still a pricey. But I mean, the device. Don't get me wrong; it sounds fantastic. Oh it's, yeah, it does. It's easy to use, um, and, but I just you know, it, it literally, I, <laughs> I I bought. Uh, I was interested in getting a video camera, and I know they talked a little bit about some of the security around that. Yeah. But I bought one of the Ring cameras recently just to try it. Mm-hmm. I was very pleased with it. Well, I go on the Amazon. They own Ring now. Right. And they're like, hey, great. We have the wireless version. We have wired version. And, oh, by the way, they both come with a free Echo Dot. I'm like, huh. <laughs> but, you know, smart, right? Because literally there's no price difference. Why wouldn't I get it? Right. Um, and so I have, you know, I've got a few of those around the house. I, I, I know you do as well. Mm-hmm. And and I wish that Apple would have a little bit more out there so I could get it. Because I would be I would be fine if I could have an all Apple environment. But frankly, for the price, I'm not. I'm only going to have one uh, HomePod at this point. Maybe two down the road. Um, but that said, it's it's still a great device. I'm going to hope that they continue to evolve it and um, see where it goes. Yeah. And um, the other thing I was happy to hear about is uh, when you hand over music, you can just bring your iPhone right next to it. Yeah. And it'll, that was awesome. So it was such a pain to have to turn it on and re- feature it over. Of course, I've got two HomePods because I have it right. stereo. I had to have it stereo. And do you, you only have one, right? Mm. Or, or, Correct. Yeah. So I, I, I uh, dove in and uh, got a second one. So uh, the sound has been pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. So it, the, the HomePod, there wasn't really much to talk, much chatted about. But the cool thing is that you now with that with the handover, you can hand over music, a podcast, or a phone call, right? To the, well, yeah. by just moving it right did, over to the HomePod. Did they indicate if some of those handoff features would work with like third party apps? Like so if I wanted to use Overcast, could I do that as well? Do you know? I did I didn't see anything as of yet. Okay. Um, it just says podcast. It doesn't say podcasts apps. So right. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. I mean, maybe if it's yeah. just audio. Especially um, especially Overcast, which is pr- as prominent as that app is, I would not right. be yeah, surprised. and if and if there's an API that Marco can tie into it, you can bet he'll 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 do that at some point. And again, it's just it's nice. It, it is a nice experience because a lot of times I come home, right. and 
you know, it, it, I ended up basically sticking the AirPod in my ear, which is great. But if there's no one else around, I'd rather play it on a speaker. Yeah. So that's HomePod. Two more things we want to hit, touch upon. Um, uh, HomeKit and then CarPlay. We'll touch on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, HomeKit, uh, wow, that was pretty exciting. They, they, they've hmm. got routers and, and, yeah. and a secure video feature that was uh, that was included. Um, they imp- they're aiming to improve this feature called the HomeKit Secure Video with an on-device an- analyzing and uh, have an encrypted stream that is then sent to iCloud that no one, not even Apple, can see. Uh, right. So it was very imp- imp- impressive. HomeKit is also coming to routers where effectively a uh, firewall between a smart uh, home accessories in your network. And they they, they did say their their launch partners is, is to start was Linksys, Aero, and Charter Spectrum, really? <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. Spectrum. Um, I think they're they they tend they're, to partner with Apple a lot, and they're in the West Coast. That's why. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. That, I, I. But they didn't mention any cameras, really, did they? No, what they just they, they did mention some cameras. And I don't recall the names. I think there were three that were shown on the screen. Yeah. But I like the idea, obviously, from a security perspective. But I also like the idea that they. I think they said they would keep the recordings for ten days, and that's. Wow. Nice because a lot of these cameras today, you have to pay for a service. Right. Um, like with the Ring, came with a thirty-day free trial. Right. And at the third end of thirty days, it's like, sorry. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. Yeah. I mean, I can't do any recordings from the past, and <laughs> and most of the time, I just want to see something within the last, you know, half an hour, hour. Right. And and, and admittedly, even their their subscription plan is, I think it's like thirty dollars a year. It's not. I mean, it's not huge, but it's right. just like yeah. you know, it, it goes back to that subscription fatigue. I'm like, here's thirty dollars there. Yeah. And ten, here and it's like so many subscriptions oh my. right <laughs> and, and yes i do want to support the right the, the right developers and the right companies so i'm curious if this can give a nice blend of security and some functionality that would just allow us to to save a few dollars yeah so um that was home kit that was really much we can really hit on too too heavily there with the that i think the router thing. stuff and you know you mentioned it the the security yeah. that it provides that's that is pretty nice, right? Because then, if you're, even if your network gets uh, compromised, uh, the devices themselves won't be, and vice versa. And I know there are people, uh, Bart Bouchot, who, who does security bits on, yep. uh, on Allison. Uh, Silicast, right? You know, he has a second router just for Internet of Things, and he's got this cool but very complicated setup yeah. to wall off those. And it's like I don't, I don't want to do geek that. Like us, check that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm lazy, so yeah. by building it into HomeKit, you're providing that security that I want. Yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely definitely is uh, going to be uh, something great uh, with uh, with the home kit. It'll be interesting to see where that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, CarPlay, Apple says this is the bring us that they brought the biggest update to yeah. CarPlay yet. But they did give some stats about CarPlay. Unfortunately, my car does not have CarPlay as of yet. Um, no, neither does mine. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, we're sad. <laughs> we are my sad car's... because my mother has CarPlay and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You can't do uh, that. Yeah. Well, they were saying something like uh, seventy, or I think it was about seventy percent of cars in the U.S. now have CarPlay. Yeah, I mean, it, that's it pretty really awesome. something. It, it 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 used to be Apple has a, a page under CarPlay where they show the car models that are supported, mm-hmm. and it used to be a, a an okay list. And when I would rent a car two two years ago or, or more. I would, no, oh, this is because I'm insane, would actually look for those cars with <laughs> CarPlay because I wanted that consistent interface. Yeah, me too. And now I don't even really have to think about it. I, I, in fact, I couldn't tell you the last time I, I didn't have a car, a rental car with CarPlay. Right. Um, and again, it's just convenient because you've got the maps, and then now l- within the last year they supported Waze and Google Maps. Yep. Uh, so you can have, uh, of course, Overcast again. And net with the messages, it's just like this is just – it's a great driving experience because it's all hands free. Yeah. It's 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 a it's, and I'm sorry, no offense against car manufacturers, they have some of the worst interfaces. Hundred percent on the planet. <laughs> you, I have I have Fiat Chrysler, Chrysler product, uh, you connect. Ugh, horrible. Yeah, and, and and you know it makes me appreciate you know Apple and other companies that do spend time in user user interface that it, it isn't easy. I give them that, but you know you just. Certain things just should be left to technical experts, and, and that's fine. I mean, Android Auto is is just as good as as CarPlay, in my my opinion. So let them manage the screen, and you have the car. And I know yeah. someone's going to argue that both Google and Apple are trying to get into the car business, but um, so that's it, it. To your point, Dave, it, it's exciting that it's making this pervasive uh, entrance into the car market. And I think, you know, probably by 2020, 21, it'll probably be close to 100%. And, and why not, right? Yeah. Let Apple have 
Apple and Google, let them manage that so you sure. can spend your time designing the car. So, um, all right, and then let's let's talk a little bit about iTunes. Everybody was pretty excited when they made that announcement. And, of course, that's a Mac app, but but uh, but we use our iPhones and iPads all the time. To A lot of people use it to back their, back their devices up, right? Yeah, um, and, so- and and if, if, if <laughs> I'm sure you saw it, but kudos to Craig Federici for throwing yeah. in a, a big joke with, with, with cramming more into to iTunes, you know, yeah. that the Apple can be – can 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 have a sense of humor, and they and they definitely showed it there. But they, yeah, you're they, right. They, they made fun of themselves because I, you know, iTunes was around for about 18 years. Yeah, one of the biggest they bloated software crammed you know, pieces everything of software in, there. in there for years. And I'll and you and I both have been down the road of iTunes since its inception. Um, so they on on Mac OS Catalina, which came out as well, um, they split the the music app and the podcast app and the Apple TV app all in separate right. apps. Yeah. Now. The cool thing is they still are supporting backups. There is an yes. iTunes uh, feature in in that so that you still can you still can continue to back up your device uh, using quote unquote iTunes. So yeah. that that is still there. And the, and remember how in, in during the the, the session they, he says and yes you can plug it in and it won't and it won't launch. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, that's one of the most annoying things in the world. You always oh, had to go yeah. in and turn that darn thing mm-hmm. off and um and, and so I I, I think. I think they did some smart things with that. What do you think? Yeah. No, I, I think it made sense to split it up. They're going to have to take some time because people, again, you're, you're making change. But at this point, I don't know too many people that really use iTunes to back up their devices Not on a regular too much basis. Yeah. You know, you really have it pretty easy through iCloud, which is the, really the way it should be. But iTunes itself is still very ha- handy for people with large music libraries. So I get that. What's interesting and I'll, I'll dive a little bit into the geek side, is that if you wanted to play with the betas, unlike in the past where you downloaded a profile and the profile then said, yes, this device can receive the beta uh, software, they actually made you on the iPhone and the iPad go back old school. You basically had to really? fire up iTunes and download the restore image and then upgrade that way. And I'm like, whoa, that's going back for five years. Oh, I, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that. On, you're right with, them, with, with that, yeah. I, and, I found that interesting. Yeah, I, and it just which created a huge like. Wait a second, hang on. I haven't done this in a while. I forgot how to do it. Hey, forget you forget how you do it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, someone said that they reached out to Craig Federici, and he said, "Well, we were really trying to limit the number of users, so only the hardest of the hardcore would would bother." Yeah. Interestingly enough, on the developer page, they even said, "Hey, thrill seekers, pay attention. <laughs> this is not meant to be, you know, just goofing around. This is for serious developer developers." Um, but of course, that doesn't stop me. No. So. It was interesting, but I was struggling because the interface is not as intuitive. You know, I was used to it just always being on the sidebar, and like you said, it comes up. What's interesting, Finder will show the device, and if you click on the device yeah. in Finder, it comes up with a summary screen, and you can do everything from there. Right, right. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is actually, that's well designed. That makes more sense. It's a device. You're in Finder. Let me see what's all what it's all about. Yeah. So, uh and then t- just to throw out this little bit, which is kind of funny, uh, honestly, we do have some Windows, probably you Windows users out there that use uh, use Windows. Mm-hmm. Oh, use sure. iTunes. We do work. Um, uh, iTunes for Windows is sticking around. Yeah. <laughs> so well, Apple, Apple, con- Apple confirmed this with uh, Ars Technica that, uh, uh, that w- the Windows version is, uh, there's no changes. It's just. As it is, yep. <laughs> nothing changes. Just so, support the new device. So, if you really want to go back to iTunes, <laughs> go ahead. You go and use a you go use a sure. Windows machine. So, um, before we go, I wanted to talk a little bit about Mac stock. Um, you are, of course, the uh, the coordinator of, uh, of all the fun events and such with Mac stock. Uh, I've been talking about this uh, for years. I this will might be my fifth year speaking, which is yep. I'm very very proud of um, that I've done that. Um, and. Uh, you uh, you've got some inside things that we're going to be doing that I hadn't been talking about, and in including the unofficial pre pre events. Sure. So I mean, we, you know, MacStock is all about you know learning and and the community, and part of that, of course, is to get time to spend with people during the event, but also what what do you do after after you're done, right? And you know, Friday when we all get together, people are arriving. We have a nice little reception. People get to see each other they haven't seen for a year. Uh, you know, do do uh, grab some appetizers uh, and a drink, and catch up. And then, of course, Saturday hits the uh, conference at full speed. Saturday night, we're uh, doing what we did last year, which worked out really well. Which was the gaming areas. We've got karaoke by Kelly. We've got 
uh, the board games, and we've got the Apple TV games, and it was just yeah. it was just a blast last year. It was, so we're gonna really was. we're gonna do more of that. Um, we're looking at a couple different options for the food for Saturday night, which is exciting. You know, we're trying to do either a little more of a Chicago theme or something local there um, mm. to split it up a bit. But to your point, Dave, there are people that come earlier. They're like, "Hey, yeah, I've never been to Chicago. What do you recommend?" I'm like, "Well, why don't we try to do something?" So this year. We said, hey, let's let's do some stuff. People want to come as early as Wednesday. We'll do an evening event. Yep. Uh, and then we started looking at things. So, Dave, I know you are uh, a diehard Cubs fan. I yeah. am a, uh, a, a, a somewhat diehard Sox fan. That, <laughs> somewhat. Uh, we, we, you've invested yeah. my, my, much of your income to, to that team. So, <laughs> Oh, yes. I, uh, I am a season ticket holder. But, no, I, it's, 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 I love baseball. No, we, and, unfortunately, we both the Cubs do. are out of town until yeah. that Friday. So, it conflicted directly with Max Doc. Sure. But the Sox are in town. I'm like, hey, great. Let's do a Sox game. Um, I talked to my rep, and he was like, hey, that's great. We'll, we'll, we'll we maybe we can do something special like an on-field photo, get a little tour of the park. So that's the plan for that Wednesday. That's yeah. the twenty-fourth. Yeah. Uh, they're playing the Marlins, so there's a very good chance the White Sox can win that game. <laughs> uh, Interleague play. <laughs> yeah, um, but it, it'll it'll be fun. We're going to cap that one at about twelve people, just because of yeah. just the nature of going around a ballpark, and uh, we're actually. We're getting very close up to it. So if you're interested, uh, please reach out to me and we'll talk about uh, ways of finding out information and contacts yeah. uh, in a minute. So that'll start Wednesday night. Thursday, um, we have some of our guests, the speakers, coming in early. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wally and Wendy Trawinski were gracious enough to offer to do a photo walk. So we're going to go to one of the preeminent zoos in the U.S., Lincoln Park Zoo. It's right by the lake. In Chicago, so we'll start there in the afternoon, yep. walk around for a couple hours, and then just basically head straight south yep. down Michigan Avenue, which is our key uh, shopping district and restaurants mm -hmm. and all sorts of great skyscrapers, and basically head all the way out to the Apple Store. So we'll get to go visit and uh, David and I went there last year. Yeah. Um, it's always a great place to visit. It is, um, and it's right off, literally right off the Chicago River. It's a beautiful location. It really is. They did, so we'll they do did that. Depending on my timing and who's all with us. Now, now Wednesday's event does cost because I have to get tickets and some related stuff, so that's $99. Right. Thursday's free. It's just on your own, so you can show up with us, walk around, you can leave, stick around, but we're probably going to do dinner. And Dave, I think you and I have been talking about maybe doing typical Chicago deep dish pizza or, right, or right, something local. like that. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be a blast. And hopefully the weather will cooperate because my plan is at sunset that we go up to the top of the John Hancock building. There you go. We've got a nice lounge there. And we just watch the sunset over the city and watch the lights turn on. It is just gorgeous. Is. And I will challenge anybody. <laughs> Chicago is the most beautiful city at night. The skyline is, is. absolutely stunning. Love my hometown. So, yep. Uh, so uh, that's Thursday and then uh, then Friday back to uh, to Max Doc. So, yeah, we have a bunch of activities planned. Yeah. Best thing to do, uh, if you just want to get info right now, just visit my website, which is barryfalk.com. So it's B-A-R-R-Y-F-U-L-K.com. Okay. And it'll just tell you what we're doing Wednesday and Thursday. And then uh, my email's on there. Um, you can reach me there, or of course, on Twitter. Yep. And just say, hey, you're interested. Um, on the show notes. <laughs> yep. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, me I, I love the conference, and it's great. But mm -hmm. I really enjoy the social aspect. Speaking of the conference, yes, we want to make sure everybody knows what the conference is. Again, that that conference is, if you're just going to come to the conference, it's July 27th, 28th. Um, mm -hmm. We've got amazing speakers, as always. Myself, Chuck Joyner, Allison Sheridan, um, and, uh, Wally Trudinsky is going to be doing, yeah. uh, Mike Schmitz, uh, just to name a few. Uh, yeah, and, David, and, uh, David, uh, David Sparks is uh, going to be there doing his yep. 500th episode. Be live. Uh, That's going to be awesome. And we'll I can't. Packet. Yeah, but I can't wait to see that. And there's going to be yep. just, I bet, bet going to be cast of thousands. Yeah, <laughs> no, probably Terpstra not that much. There. Bet trips are there. There's just going to be just amazing speakers. So come on, see us. Uh, to go to the Absolutely. website, we'll have we'll have the link on the web on on our show notes. It's maxstock2019.com. And for in touch with iOS listeners, if you use the offer code in touch at checkout, you will save seventy dollars off that regular price, and that covers yep. both days, including meals for both days too. So uh, check it out. I want to spend. Too much more time on it, but uh, other than the fact that we, we love Mac Stock and we want you to come out. So, 
Well, Barry, this was a great show, wasn't it? We just had a yeah, lot of blast fun. Dave. It's always a, a blast. We, talking you to and you. I just we just have a great time, and I got to have you come on more often. But you're just so busy. <laughs> you're so busy. But uh, and this but, time of year is a challenge. I it mean, is. It's very there are several so. work functions that happen at the same time as Max oh, yeah. Stock, and it's, it's I pull great, my hair crazy. out, and of course. Um, as you know, I went to five ball games last week, yeah. so I, I I can't help myself. I just you I love are the, the, I love the summertime in Chicago. Dedicated Sox fan, that's okay. So uh, uh, let everybody know how they can uh, get a hold of you. You said that you're at uh, on Twitter at uh, Folk B. Yeah, right? so Folk B F U L K B at Twitter, and of course uh, you can email me whether it's Barry Falk at gmail dot com or Barry at Four Mac Eyes Only. Uh, okay. will also get to me as well. So. Uh, looking forward to it. I, uh, I've already heard from several people that are interested, uh, which is really exciting. So please, if you are serious about that, let me know right away so I can procure your tickets and lock you in. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Please send your comments, questions, suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at in touch with iOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, go to our website at intouchwithios.com where all the links to all the ways to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Again, thank you, Barry, for being here. Thank you, Dave. And uh, thanks, for lis- uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll talk to you again soon.